Right, in today's video, we are going to work on some questions uh, that start with the word show or explained. Right, so for this kind of questions, basically there are two methods uh, that you can apply. Uh, the first method is using the concepts of uh, completing the square. The second method is to use the discriminant, which is the value for b squared minus 4ac. So we shall focus on using the concepts of completing the square first. Right, let's look at the first question. Right, so the first question is we are asked to show that, right, this function is always negative. Okay, so for such a question where you are asked to show, uh, you need, it involves some kind of explanation. And if you were to look at the ang functions that are given, it's already in the completed, completed square format. It's already in this format, right? Where h and k are constants, right? So there's no need to ex do any. Uh, you, there's no need to expand this, right? There's no don't need to do that. All right. So we need to do some explanation. So what are the explanations that we need to do? Right, first of all, we know that when we square um, x minus 1, the value will always be more than or equal than 0. Right, and if you were to multiply negative on both sides, then you have to flip the inequality sign. Just to give an example, we know that 2... Right, 2 is less than 3. If you're going to multiply with a negative on both sides, then negative 2 now becomes more than negative 3. You have to flip the inequality sign. Alright, so I'm going to take negative 2 on both sides. Right, and if you look at the number line, okay, we can clearly see that negative 2 is less than 0. So therefore, the functions given this function that we're given is always negative. So this is how you approach questions where um, you are asked to show something something is negative or something something is always positive. Right, let's look at uh, the second questions. Right, if you look at the second questions, right, you we we can see that it is not in the completed square form. Right. So what we need to do is to apply to change it into completed square form before we do explanation. So again, if you look at these questions, right? Yeah, you're supposed to show show that the function f x will be always more than equal than three quarter for all real values of x. All right. So the first steps that uh, we need to do is to convert your x squared plus x plus one in the completed square format, right? So we look for the coefficients of x, which is 1. Take the coefficients of x, which is 1 divided by 2 square root. So basically, you add this, right? And then you add it, you have to take it away. That is the methods for doing completing the square. Okay, so what happened next is, Right, yes, the three terms, the first three terms will collapse into a completed square. And then the next two terms, you can just use your calculator to work it out to get positive three quarter. All right, so this, this one, we have achieved our objective. This is in the completed square format already. So now we can do some explanation. Right, so we know that when you square x plus half, it's always more than equal than zero. And I'm going to add three quarter on both sides. And when you add something, you don't change the inequality. The inequality sign remain the same. All right, so we're going to replace, right, replace this guy here with fx. So you can see that fx will be always greater than equal than three quarter for all real values of x. Alright, so this is another example on how you can go about 
solving a questions where you know you're supposed to show something it's a questions on explanation right let's do another questions again this question starts with the word explained right so you have to do some uh, explanation so explained why 2x squared plus x plus 3 is positive for all real values of x right so the methods that we're going to use it's the same as what we have done for the first two questions all right we, we are going to complete we're going to uh, change 2x squared plus x plus 3 into a completed square format now so if you look at the functions that are given right step number one we will need to factorize 2 out 2 from your x squared plus x term right you leave your positive 3 alone right and then the next thing is that we were to complete the square for this guy here, x squared plus half x. So the coefficients of x is half. So we take half divided by 2, that gives you 1 quarter. So that is what happened here. You add to square of 1 quarter and then you take it away. All right. Not to forget, you still have your plus 3 there. Right. And then what happened? Yes. The first three terms will collapse into these first three terms here will collapse into your perfect square. Okay, and you can simplify this to be one quarter. Oh, sorry, to be one over sixteen. Now, the very important things that I want to remind you is there should be a bracket here. Okay, and there should be a huge bracket here. It's very important. Why is it that you need a huge bracket there? I'll show you what happened at the next step. You have to multiply 2 into your square bracket, right? And if you don't have a square bracket here, right, you may forget to take 1 over 16 to times 2 to give you this guy. Okay, so it's very, very important. The, the square, the, the, the brackets that I highlighted in red, you must make sure it's there. Okay, what is the next step? Right, so the next step is you can just use your calculator to work negative 2 over 16 plus 3 and that gives you positive 23 over 8. So we have successfully convert the given functions into the completed square format and the next thing is that we need to do some explanation. Right, right. So we all know that when you square it, x plus one quarter is always a positive value it can be zero to get zero means you substitute x to be negative one quarter then if you multiply with the two right and you add 23 over 8 on both sides right you end up getting it uh, more than or equal than 23 over 8 and 23 over 8 it's a positive value it's more than zero so therefore we conclude that 2x squared plus x plus 3 is positive for all real values of x so from, from these three examples, you can see that for such a question, we need to explain something or show something, right? The skill to apply is to convert the given functions into a completed square format. And then after that, do some explanation. So the explanation is this part here. Right, and it's the same for all these three questions. Right, so in some questions, you may not be able to apply uh, completing the square method, right? So for such questions, you will have to resort to using another method. And this method is using the concept of the discriminant, finding the values of b squared minus 4ac, right? To help us to explain um, how we go about solving the problem sum. All right, let's look at another question. Right, in this questions here, okay, again, if you see, uh, read the questions, you see that uh, you're supposed to show something, something. All right, so it's a questions on the explanation, explaining how you go about solving it. So let's try, let's break down these questions in, into small little parts so that we can have a better idea of what the questions is, is required of us. All right, so you're given a curve, Right, and this curve lies entirely above the x-axis, right? So, so if you were to sketch the curve, right, this is how it looks like. 
okay, a curve is entirely above the x-axis. So if you look at a curve like that, means there's no x-intercept, right? There's no x-intercept, no x-intercept. Right, it does not touch the x-axis. So no x-intercept means it has no real roots. Which means also the value for b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. Right. Right. So this these are the concepts that we know for a curve that lies entirely above the x-axis. No x-intercept, no real roots. Therefore, the values of b squared minus 4ac must be less than zero. So what the question is saying is that for such a curve that lies entirely above the x-axis, the smallest value, if you look at the curve, can you see that there is an unknown value, that, that it's a variable there, that's k. So k is something that is unknown. All right, so k can be any value. k can be 1, can be 2, can be 4, can be negative 7, whatever, can be anything. Right, uh, but for this particular curve to lie entirely above the x-axis, then the smallest value, which is the integer value of k, it's 4. So we need to prove that. All right. So to show blah, blah, blah means we need to prove that. So our job is to prove that the smallest integer value of k is 4 for the curve to be entirely above the x-axis. Okay, so that is our objective. So how do we prove that? So we prove it by using this guy here using b squared minus 4ac less than zero okay right so let's write down the values of a which is five values of b b is the coefficients of x which is negative two c it's anything that is does not belong to the x squared or the x term so left only k minus three so we're going to substitute into b squared minus 4ac less than zero and let's see what happened Right, make sure you bracket negative 2, close bracket square, because negative 2 is a, a negative value, so you need to bracket it. So minus 4, bracket 5, k minus 3, less than 0. So that gives us 4 minus 20, k minus 3, less than 0. Positive 60. Negative 20k plus 64 less than 0. Right, so 64 is less than... I'm going to add 20 to both sides. So to avoid having to flip the inequality sign. Right, but you must be careful because can you see that 20k is more than 64. So if you change the position, alright, if you change the position, then make sure that the big mouth faces 20k. Alright, and then we can divide uh wait did i make any mistake here b squared minus four four times five twenty okay so we're going to uh you can divide both sides by twenty so k will be more than 64 divided by 20. So 64 divided by 20, you would get uh, 3.2. All right, so we're going to draw the number line. Right, so if k is more than 3.2, then the values of k can be 3.3, 3.4, 3.5. 3.6, 4, 5, 6, blah, blah, blah. So therefore, the smallest integer value will be 4. Okay, so from the number line, we can see that, uh, therefore, from the number line, from the above, all right, so we can see that the smallest value of k the smallest uh integer values of k the smallest value of k it's four 
for the curve to lie entirely above the x-axis. Right, so what are the key concepts here? The key concepts here, first of all, you have to understand what it means by curve lying entirely above the x-axis. Means when something lies above the x-axis, means there's no x-intercept, there's no real roots. Therefore, the values of b squared minus 4 c is less than 0. So the concept is, all these are the concepts that you need to know. Right, then you use b squared minus 4 c less than 0 and then all this will be your algebraic manipulations, you know, involving inequality. And then drawing the number line. And from the number line, we can clearly see that the smallest integer values of k is 4. Alright, let's look at the last questions. Again, if you look at the questions, you need to show your workings clearly and you need to explain. Right, so explain. So in other words, you just have to do as per normal, you know, show your steps. And after that, you just do some explanations on how you derive your answer, how you get your answer. That what is this is what it means by explain. Okay, explain how you derive the answer. So if you look at these questions here, you are given a functions, and these functions must be more than zero. And when that happens, the values of k will be more than eleven. That means your k can be 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And when you put your k, the values of k inside here, okay, put your values of k to be 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, whatever. And for all real values of x, this curve will be more than zero. So what does it mean? What does it mean that this, the values of this curve is more than zero? So if you're going to represent, all right, if you're going to let 2x squared minus 8, 8x minus 3 plus k to be y, to be a quadratic, curve right so what we are saying that is you want your y to be more than zero that means you want all positive values of y so there's no negative value for y hence the curve will be entirely above the x-axis so a curve that's entirely above the x-axis what are the concepts involved yes no x-intercept no real roots hence the values of b squared minus 4 is less than zero okay so this again it's similar to what we have done earlier on. It's just that the phrasing of the question is different, right? But the concepts are still the same. So we use b squared minus 4 c less than zero. Sub in all the values for a uh, for b, a, and c, and you end up getting an inequality because it's less than zero. Okay, you simplify it, right? And if you look at it here, right, at purpose D. Uh, change the, the color of the inequality to orange to remind you because you're dividing both sides of inequality with a negative number hence you need to flip the inequality sign and from there we get k more than 11 which is what the questions want us to do right so we have achieved it so therefore we just put bracket shown okay so I have done um, several questions right um, that you it requires to show your you require you to explain your answer uh, show something right okay and uh, I think you, you would have to try to do the questions on your own right practice a few times and then I'm sure that uh, if you happen to see something similar to what I've done you'll be able to uh, to solve it, to solve them. Okay.